Welcome back to Real Takes, where we are all movie love all the time. I'm Ann Stott, and tonight we are starting the way we do, talking about an organization that uh, I care about, that I would love more people to support, and I want to talk about the Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico and um, hope that people can give them some money given the current flooding and power challenges happening in Puerto Rico once again. Um, I really love the Boys and Girls Clubs in general and have supported the Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico on and off over the years. Um, I just feel like they're a really strong community-based organization and, you know, are very connected to uh, the local, the local the communities they serve. Um, and so I like supporting them in times of crisis because I feel confident that the help I'm giving them will result in help going directly to people. So I will link below to the Boys and Girls Club of Puerto Rico. I hope you can um, give them some, them some support as Puerto Rico faces yet another devastating weather event. Um, so please help them out. Tonight we are in the last few days of Virgo season and I have to tell you all, sometimes, sometimes my synapses just fry when I'm trying to think about what film to talk about because I have more choices than I have time and I just kind of like fritz out and this week is one of those weeks which makes sense because Mercury is retrograde. And for those of you who don't know what that means, that means that we are in a period of five to six weeks, no, shorter than that, three to four weeks that happens several times a year where because of how the planets are each rotating, it appears to us that Mercury is moving backwards in the sky. It isn't actually moving backwards. It just appears to be moving backwards in relation to Earth in its orbit. And during these times, according to astrologers, communication can get more complicated. And if you have trouble with your technology or logistics breakdown, um, these sorts of things can be attributed to Mercury retrograde. So I'm blaming my synapse fry out on Mercury retrograde tonight. You don't have to blame it on that if you don't want to, but I embrace the astrology. So I had a synapse fry out. So this is an episode which I am calling Three Virgos. First, I want to say happy birthday to the actor Aldous Hodge, whose work I always love. He's appeared in many films and um, television shows at this point, but I'll just point out three performances that I particularly like. He was in Hidden Figures, the film about the three black women who worked at NASA in the 60s as NASA was moving toward trying to send a man to the moon. Um, he played the husband of one of the women in a lovely performance, but in particular, Aldous Hodge was in uh, two movies in the last couple of years that are special. One is called Clemency from 2019, starring Alfre Woodard, and it's a it's basically a movie about the death penalty. And Alfre Woodard is the warden of a prison and has to oversee death penalties. And Aldous Hodge plays a prisoner who is on death row in a riveting performance. This film was written by Chinonye Chukwu and um, is a harsh, deep look at the psychological trauma of the death penalty in this country. Highly recommend. And then also uh, Aldous Hodge played Jim Brown in Regina King's directorial debut, One Night in Miami. Uh, which is a movie based on a play about a night in Miami when Muhammad Ali had just become the heavyweight champion of the world and Muhammad Ali, Sam Cooke, Jim Brown, and Malcolm X spend an evening together and it's a look at um, 
these four powerful black men and what they're each facing in their lives as powerful black men in the United States in the 60s and how they challenge each other, how they need each other. And I, and I really like this movie because so often when we have movies about, you know, oppressed groups of people in this country, we focus on one powerful person and sort of them going up against power structures. And so to have a film that's about these four, you know, outsized, incredible, courageous personalities and kind of a like behind the scenes look at who they were to each other, I think is unique and special. And also Regina King is a force of nature and I love her as an actor and I'm so excited she's getting into directing and I was really moved by this film. So um, happy birthday, Aldous Hodge. Thank you for your beautiful work. I look forward to more. Our next Virgo today is Ava DuVernay, um, who we've already talked about. I talked about her work early on in the life of Real Takes when we talked about her second film, third film, second or third film, Middle of Nowhere, which I love, love, love. And today, uh, you know, obviously, Ava DuVernay has become a creative force in Hollywood, both as a director and a writer and a producer. So both means to not only as a director, but also as a writer and as a producer. Um, she's produced many projects by other artists. She um, produced, created, produced, wrote um, the show Queen Sugar. Uh, she she did the limited series When They See Us. But I just want to shout out in particular to The 13th, which is a documentary she made on the heels of the success of her film Selma. And I love that she like dug in and made a documentary. Um, there's a long tradition that Hollywood doesn't seem to embrace of, you know, committed directors making both narrative features and documentaries. And I, and I love that she's embraced that tradition, particularly out of the French new wave. We have that tradition of not seeing a, a, <clears throat> a demarcation between narrative and documentary film. And she, you know, put her power toward making this devastating documentary about the 13th Amendment, Amendment which abolished slavery in this country, but also contained a clause about criminal criminality that basically set the stage for the criminal criminalization of black people in the United States, which, you know, and in the documentary, she really connects the dots over the decades of what that have led us to the prison industrial complex. We have now the privatized prison industrial complex we have now that means that um, black men are 6.5% of the United States population, but they represent 40% of the incarcerated people in this country right now. And the United States has 5% of the world's population. And we have 25% of the world's incarcerated population. So we have a massive problem going on in this country with the prison industrial complex in general and our criminal system in general and in particular, the way those systems are employed to continue to oppress and silence black people in this country and then exploit them as cheap labor coming full circle to the system of slavery. So an incredible um, kind of uh, exposition of the history of the development of this system in our country as like the next way to oppress black people. And also, you know, a, a, a revelation or a, an exploration of how this was a conscious 
a conscious decision and um, campaign on the part of various white leaders over the last 50 years, really starting with Nixon in the wake of the Civil Rights Act, you know, as a as a way to continue to oppress black people in this country. So the 13th is a powerful documentary, way more articulate than I have just been about it. Been about it. So yeah, so not only does the documentary tell the 120 year story of the way that criminalization has been used to systemically used to oppress black and brown people in this country in a concise, compelling way, which is an unbelievable feat in and of itself. I also really love the form of it. I love the storytelling tools that she used and the discussion about, in particular, about, you know, now that we have all this visual imagery on video of violence against Black people, you know, what are the sort of moral ethical questions around showing that violence. And then also her use of music is um, compelling. You know, obviously there's background music through a lot of the documentary, but she also uses these kind of musical interludes to let us absorb what we've taken in so far in the kind of documentary version of storytelling, which is what it is. She's telling the story of the 13th Amendment and how it's been exploited and applied to undermine what it was technically there to do. So just a lot of sophisticated storytelling happening here in this documentary that I really appreciate. Happy birthday, Ava DuVernay. Thank you for all your work, all your courage, all your vision. I look forward to your next projects, both the ones you're directing and writing and the ones you're producing. And um, so grateful for you and all your work. And last but not least, I want to talk about Jean Renoir to go way back. Um, Jean Renoir was the son of Philippe Auguste Renoir, the painter, and he is widely considered one of the most important filmmakers of early talking films, obviously a French filmmaker, most widely known for um, The Grand Illusion, La Grande Illusion, um, which is a oh, devastating film about the absurdity of war and also The Rules of the Game, which is not a personal favorite of mine, but was a revolutionary searing takedown of, of frivolous wealth um, that did kind of open the doors for a different kind of political filmmaking, even though it's not a personal favorite of mine. But Jean Renoir uh, fled France when the Nazis occupied France and he went to Hollywood and he made some films in Hollywood. It was not a marriage made in heaven. He didn't really have nice things to say about Hollywood when he finally left after the end of the war and Hollywood respected him but wasn't all that interested in the films he was making. But he made seven films while he was in Hollywood and no one considers them his best or most important work. But I want to talk about a film he made while he was in Hollywood called This Land Is Mine, starring Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Hara and the always great George Sanders. Now, again, no one's going to say This Land Is Mine is Jean Renoir's best film, including me. Um... It's clearly, you know, mostly shot on studio lots, even though it's supposed to be set in Europe. Um, but it, it doesn't have the kind of sensual sophistication visually that the great Jean Renoir films have. And the script is a heavy-handed war propaganda film, no doubt about it. 
And yet I think it sort of overcomes those elements and it's become a little bit of a favorite of mine. So the film is set in a small, supposedly European, could be anywhere village, but clearly a village in France. Um, and it's really a film about the psychological toll in for everyone involved in being occupied by Nazi Germany and the and the sort of psychological warfare really that that the Nazis used in dividing people in these villages and the cruelty and the sadism that was brought to bear on a on an individual level in these towns Maria O'Hara and Charles Lawton play school teachers in the town and Charles Lawton is a coward. There's a totally sexist, you know, plot about him being, you know, the son of an overbearing mother, which is played to sort of Hollywood extreme by the woman playing his mother. Um, and it's really a movie about how he finds his courage through the oppression of the Nazis and to sort of through his love for Maureen O'Hara. And the script was written by Dudley Nichols, who wrote movies like Stagecoach and Bringing Up Baby. And so there's this kind of ho heavy handed Hollywood feel, and there's some really great writing. And um, the last 20 minutes are kind of devastating. And Charles Lawton gives several speeches, which again are sort of Hollywood speechification, and yet he is devastating. And sort of, he's come into his power. I'm not giving away any plots, but he's kind of found his own courage that that is true to his own personality. And, um, lays himself totally bare in a way that kind of breaks me. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the great Jean Renoir films, if you haven't seen The Grand Illusion, please, please watch The Grand Illusion. But if you want like a, a Jean Renoir outland outlier, I just got to say This Land is Mine breaks me a little bit every time I see it. And I'll also say that Charles Lawton was a was a huge champion of Ma Maureen O'Hara early in her career. Maureen O'Hara was Irish and Charles Lawton was British and he discovered her early and she'd been in some other things, but he was instrumental in her getting cast as Esmeralda to his Hunchback in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which had been made a few years before that. And um, so they're teamed again in this film and they became very good friends and were friends lifelong friends um, after doing this early early work for Maureen O'Hara together. And I also want to say that as titles go, I just love the title, This Land is Mine. Like, So this movie came out in 1943. It was made during the war. And Jean Renoir called it, This Land is Mine. And I just feel the power of that title so intensely. So um, happy birthday to Jean Renoir. Um, there are many great Jean Renoir films to explore. And um, I think there's always something interesting in looking at the lesser known work of great artists. And in this case, I would recommend This Land is Mine. And uh, thank you to the Virgos for all your beautiful work. And we'll be stepping into Libra season next week. Hopefully I will have come out of this Mercury retrograde brain freeze and we will see what happens. I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks for watching Real Takes. Hit the subscribe button below so the algorithms will tell you when new episodes are out. And if you want to support Real Takes, please visit my Patreon page where you can join at any tier from $2 to $100 per thing I make. The $15 tier is specifically about supporting Real Takes and you'll get behind the scenes information and be thanked in future videos. 
See you next Wednesday.